All right, welcome back everyone for another deep dive. You guys wanted to know more about focus and productivity, especially with like distractions and all that. Yeah, it's hard nowadays. So we decided to uh, really dig into this book. It's Hyper Focus, How to Be More Productive in a World of Distraction. It's by Chris Bailey. Have you heard of this one? Oh yeah, I've read this one. It's really good. Yeah, I'm really excited to get into some of these concepts, especially the uh, what is it? Scatter focus. Scatter focus. Yeah. And then uh, something about productive procrastination. Is that right? Yes. I mean, can procrastination be productive? There is, and that's one of the things that this book really kind of pushes. Okay. Well, let's just get right into it then. Be, okay. How would you describe uh, this whole book? What are some of the main points or takeaways? So Bailey actually has ten key lessons in this book. It's not about forcing yourself to concentrate like harder or longer, which I think we all try to do. But he actually says that we need to work with the reality of how our lives really are. He says we have busy lives and we have to be more practical about how we approach focus. So intentional focus? Is that yeah. kind of the gist of, of the first one? The first lesson is intentional focus. Yeah. You have to choose what you focus on. Right. But like I said, we live in a world with constant notifications, demands, Everyone wants something from us. It can be really hard to do that, which is why this concept is so important. Absolutely. He really encourages you to choose the things that really matter. Not just what's what's like right in your face. The ones that are the loudest or the most recent. You yeah. have to really be deliberate. So what about this uh, scatter focus? What is that exactly? Okay, so scatter focus. Imagine you're completely absorbed in a task. You're giving it all of your mental energy, right? Right. And then you take a step back. You take a mental break. But this is not multitasking. This is about recognizing that you actually need a breather. You need mm -hmm. to give your brain a break. So scatter focus is all about switching back and forth between these really intense focus sessions and then intentional mental rest. Oh, okay. I, I think I do this without, without realizing it. I was working on this design project the other day. And I just couldn't figure it out. So I went for a walk. And then all of a sudden, it was like, boom, the answer. Yeah. Just like that. That was scatter focus. Exactly. Because yeah. you are allowing your brain to work on it in the background. It's like when you're in the shower, you're doing the dishes. You get the best ideas then. And then you're like, oh, my gosh, I know the answer. Totally. So, I mean, for somebody listening to this who who wants to do this, wants to try it out, I mean, how how can we apply this, this scatter focus to our everyday lives? It starts with knowing yourself. Are you somebody who gets up early, you're ready to go, or are you a night owl? Oh, I'm a night owl for yeah. sure. If you're a morning person, then get the harder tasks done then. If you know you're going to have a slump in the afternoon, maybe use that time for a walk. Catch up on some emails, you know? That makes, yeah, I mean, that's great. So, I mean, we're, we're talking about uh, focus and productivity, but what about all the distractions? I feel like we're constantly bombarded. Yeah, all the time. So many things. And that's why it's important to set boundaries, which this book really gets into. It has so many tips for managing distractions. And it's not just the digital ones either. Think about it. If you were in a room full of screaming kids, would you be able to work? No way. But we let our phones constantly interrupt us. That's true. So put the phone on D&D, &D, close out those extra tabs on your computer, find a quiet spot. I have so many tabs open all the time. I do too. I know, it's a problem. So I guess that kind of goes along with this, um, this productive procrastination, right? It does. Mm -hmm. You know, downtime is not the enemy. It can actually be a very essential tool. See, I'm a huge procrastinator. Right. And I, I, I've always been told that's a bad thing. But but you're saying that maybe it's not. No, it's not. It helps to recharge your brain. It can boost your creativity. Have you ever stepped away from a problem and then you go back and the answer is right there? Oh, yeah. Because your subconscious have been working on it in the background. So maybe when I wander away from my desk and start reorganizing my bookshelf, that's not, it's not too bad of a thing. Exactly. We need those moments of rest, those moments of play. It's just about intentionally choosing activities that can fuel your focus when you get back to work. So what kinds of activities are we talking about? Instead of scrolling through social media, go for a walk. Maybe listen to music or meditate. Even just taking a shower or doing the dishes. If those things help you de-stress, then you're going to come back with a fresh perspective. It's all about working smarter, not harder, right? Exactly. But... But how do we know when to buckle down and focus and when to let our minds wander? That's where mindfulness comes in. This book is all about knowing your own attention patterns. When are you most focused? What distracts you? Right. Once you figure that out, then you can manage your energy and your attention better. So it's all connected. Hmm. Energy management, mindfulness, 
procrastination. It is. All part of the same puzzle. And then you need those boundaries that we talked about earlier. This book really pushes having specific work time. Okay. Like really dedicated time. And it also talks about breaking down those really big tasks, which we all have, into smaller steps. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it just feels overwhelming. It is. When there's just so much to do. Okay, what about prioritizing? I know we should do it. I'm terrible at it. We can't do everything at once, right? Right. So he encourages you to pick the most important tasks. Okay. Things that are really going to make a difference. You got to focus on those first. All right. So we covered a lot. Scatter focus, productive procrastination, mindfulness, boundaries. It seems like hyper focus is packed with a lot of really good advice, really mm -hmm. good strategies to help us regain our attention and, and get things done. So before we wrap up, uh, do you have any final thoughts for our listeners? Focus is a skill. It's something that you can develop with practice. Start small. Pick a strategy or two that speaks to you. Okay. And then try to put them into your daily routine. Awesome. So as you guys go throughout your day, you know, think about it. What's one small change that you can make right now to be more intentional with your focus? You know, maybe yeah. it's putting your phone on D&D. &D, maybe it's blocking out some time for a walk. There you go. You know, anything like that. Really great advice. It all adds up. And remember, there's always more to learn about the power of focus. It's a journey. It is a journey. It's not a destination. All right. Great advice. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive of hyperfocus. You're welcome. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye.